our first speaker today is working on dynamic pathways dynamic leadership introduction to toastmasters mentoring project title is it takes a village it takes a village join me in learning about the mentors that taught and inspire us in in our youth then consider taking spending time some time to mentor someone in your family church and community the need now is greater than ever it can make a world of difference in someone's life let's welcome steve magne 5 to 7 minutes thank you mohan I'm sure you've heard the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. I agree with that statement and would like to expand on it. It takes a village and strong mentors to raise a child to become a person of character. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a brief intro on several mentors that helped guide me in my life. I'm certain I'd be half the man I am today without their help. I joined the Cub Scouts at the young age of eight and my, made my way up to Boy Scouts by age 11. Over the next six years, I enjoyed going to scout meetings, earning merit badges, and eventually earned the rank of Eagle Scout, the highest rank in scouting. Through this journey, I was helped by at least a dozen grown ups and volunteers. But Mr. Borbo was different. He's the father of one of my best friends and he volunteered to help for most of my 10 years in Scouts. In addition to my parents, he encouraged me to stay with the program even after I entered high school, where you know you get the feeling that it's no longer cool to be in Scouts or any childhood program. Mr. Borbo would, he would often volunteer to supervise us during hikes and outings, which was my by far my favorite part of scouting. You know, anytime you can get away from your parents for a night or two is doesn't matter where you're going, it's gonna be great. Uh, one might say it was a seed that made me appreciate all the outdoors, all the outdoors has to offer. For the Scout Oath, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Mr. Borbo died some 20 years later, and I still recall many of the great adventures he led us on and how instructive, patient, and kind he was. Excuse me. At the age of 12, my parents signed me up for religious education classes. These classes were usually held at the home of a host couple that would volunteer to mentor a dozen or so students at their home uh, one to two dozen times a year. So to some of the, us, this seemed like cruel and unusual punishment, <laughs> but I didn't mind. My parents were religious and it gave me the opportunity to learn more about my religion. And I recall gathering at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Studley one evening, every other week or so. We would take turns reading scripture and discuss how it applied to our lives. The Studleys, you might say, planted a seed of curiosity of a religion, a seed that would grow from year to year and as a result, I volunteered to teach religious education and served in other ministries in my church. It was really challenging, but it gave me an opportunity to brush up on my faith while teaching our youth. The most influential mentor of my life was my father, the Colonel, as my friends would call him. <clears throat> he was a tough West Point grad, attained the rank of Colonel in the US Army, where he received the Legion of Merit two bronze stars, and a letter of commendation from Vice President Humphrey. After 24 years of service, dad retired and focused on the job of parenting. Raising eight children, six boys and two girls, was no easy feat. Somehow my parents kept us out of trouble and helped us to graduate from college with at least one, if not two degrees. Dad didn't have as much time to volunteer with scouts as Mr. Borbo did, but I recall him coaxing me to stay with scouts and earn, excuse me, 
earn the eagle rank just like he did in his youth. Dad encouraged us to attend church and pray for those in need as often as possible. Like him, I volunteered for many parish ministries and pray often on my own and in group gatherings. One of my favorite phone apps is a prayer line. It displays a notice every time someone asks for help. And I make it a practice of stopping everything until I read and respond to each and every request, even if it's just a thumbs up. On several occasions, dad would remind me that my faith in God and character were my most valuable assets. Regardless of what I was doing, he reminded me to be a man of good character. <clears throat> According to charactercounts.org, the six pillars of character are trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. Dad died about 20 years ago and had a full military tribunal at his funeral at West Point Cemetery. A lot of my friends, family, and a few military comrades made the long trip there to pay their respects. It was a beautiful day in service. Ever since I could remember, my mother was a source of learning and nourishment. Like my dad, she was a strong, God-fearing Catholic. Raising eight kids, she rarely had a minute to herself. In addition to overseeing meal planning, shopping, cooking, and cleaning, she always made time to help us with homework and pushed us to do our best in school and community. I recall during my teen years how she mentored me to become a person of character, always respecting other people's beliefs and opinions, no matter how different they were to mine. Since then, she's taught me many social skills and continues to do so today. I'm certain that some of these skills had improved my relationships with my family, coworkers, and even my friends. Mom turned 93 in May and is still physically, mentally, and spiritually healthy. God bless her. Very fortunate and lucky to have these mentors in my life. I wish Mr. Borbo, Mr. Studley, and my father were alive today so I could thank them for mentoring me during my most impressionable years in my youth. I've got a feeling they've been watching over me all the time. I do thank my mom often. I'm glad I've had the opportunity to give back to my community in a similar way. So please take some time out of your busy schedule to volunteer for your family, church, or community and become a mentor. The need now is greater than ever. Today, I pledge to serve as a mentor for our Toastmasters Club starting this fall, and maybe I'll be mentoring you someday. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>